Hey everyone, welcome to the Confessions of a Reluctant Caregiver podcast. We're happy you're here. On the podcast, we're certain that you'll relate to the caregiver stories and find comfort with your honorary sisters. Now, before we start, I want to remind you to go to our website, confessionsofareluctantcaregiver.com, and sign up for our newsletter. It's full of useful information that you can immediately use. Now, let's learn more about today's guest. All right, guys. Um, we are so excited today to have our friend Joy Loverby with us, who has quite the confession. Now, girls, you know she's going to be sharing the good, the bad, and the <laughs> ugly with yeah. respect to caregiving. I know we can all relate, especially after last weekend. And so, yeah. Jay, why don't you, you know, I know that you had an opportunity to talk with Joy earlier. I did. I oh. did. So um, first of all, Joy is Italian. So oh, well, there you we, are. We know, Joy, you know all about food. So that really was, that's really probably what we want to talk about. Oh, but no, okay. no, <laughs> no, just kidding. So this is Joy, not a food podcast. Uh, I know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so Joy was, uh, Joy, you're raised Italian. You're raised uh, in Italian culture. And uh, caring for your elders is, is really important in that culture. It's a lot different than I think the American culture. And your grandmother lived with you guys, um, but you have cared for a lot of people. I started counting in your bio because I read through that. And so I was like, okay, how high can I count fingers, toes? And just on the ones that I counted, it's over 10 people from your mm -hmm. parents to ex-spouses. And currently uh, you're caring for two coworkers. So uh, oh, Emily, that's yeah, a Emily. Story. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was, I was wondering about Emily's, Emily's opinion on this. <laughs> I, I'm like, Joy, I can barely take care of one. I, you've got to explain how you take care of more than one at, at a time. I'm a master <laughs> at delegating. Okay. Mm. I am, I am a communicator. Okay. I do not hesitate to set boundaries and I am never the middleman. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay. Mm, I, don't get in, <laughs> I don't get in the middle of other people's relationships that have nothing to do with me. Let me give you an example. Okay. When my dad needed to go, let's say, to the grocery store, he would call me up and he'd say, can you take me to the grocery store? And I would say, no, but maybe Jimmy, Carol, Peter, or Linda can. Mm. Why don't you call and ask them to help you? So if he would say, you know, can somebody, I'd say, why don't you call those somebodies and ask them directly? And I would get myself out of the middle. Wow. Mm. Well, okay, okay, so you just had, you threw out a slew of names. Are these all your siblings? Yes. And where do they live? Because I'm just wow. kind of getting a sense of like, okay, where's the support live? Everybody is in Chicago, except for my little brother who lives overseas. So mm. he's off the hook. Well, he's in, yes. Okay, but the other ones are not off the hook. Mm. Got it. Okay. That's good. So, That's interesting. Yeah, so there's like a major, so you have with that situation in particular, there's like this support system and you got everybody on board. Like everybody's like, you got responsibilities. Oh, I, I was, I was in the mid, the middle of the, um, the circle and I didn't always get everybody on board. Mm -hmm. They didn't always say yes, of course. And many times they were missing in action. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, I never assumed that I was going to get support from them, though I did many times. And the, the secret, again, was getting myself out of the relationship with them, my siblings and my parents, and keeping them connected. It was my more my responsibility to make sure they were talking to each other. It's not my job. Mm. So wait, okay, I need to know birth order. Well, that's important. To us to I'm in the middle. Oh, who's in yes, the middle? We finally have a middle. Do you know we have not had a middle guest? Okay, who's in the middle? Me, Man. the blonde. Okay. That's how you always okay. know who's in the middle. We we are the uh, we're the crap detectors. Yes, we're the ones <laughs> that know what's going on. Okay, we, we, everybody kind of 
kind of is doing their own thing, but we know where everybody is at all times. Mm -hmm. And we know, we know things because they tell us things that they don't tell the others. Mm -hmm. So being in the middle is a great, uh, great advantage. And we also, yeah. And then, and then our parents tell us stuff and they say, you know, Jimmy, you know what he's doing and Linda. Oh, and, and so we're like, we sit there and we're like, okay, you know, keep that in the back of my mind. Oh, that's, that's actually funny. Emily, I I would say, yeah, Emily, would you say that Natalie is kind of a sounding board because she, for us, she does know, like you may tell her one thing and then I may tell her something else. Is that kind Mm -hmm. of, for Natalie, she's kind of a sounding board for both of us. She's a good, she's a great listener, but she's very mm-hmm. well will tell you her opinion pretty much yes. immediately. <laughs> she does not sugarcoat it at all. <laughs> Realist in my thought process, like <laughs> here, here is the crap show dumpster fire opinion of me. <laughs> so I so Natalie, say- Natalie, do you, do you feel that you understand everybody's position as well? even though they may be opposing, you kind of, you see everybody's point of view. I do. I think that that, that's my background though, because of where I'm, I I have to listen to a lot of people and I'm a problem solver by trade. And that's what, and I'm always looking to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And I think where Emily, you said, Natalie's going to give you her opinion. Well, it, it's Mm -hmm. always been my quote unquote job to, to give my opinion professionally. And so I'm not probably good at not just straight filtering <laughs> and filter joy. And, you know, you know, our friend Consuela said this, and this is true for me, is that uh, when, when, if professionally I would, I would soften my response, but with the girls, because we're so tight and we know each other so well, you get full 100% unfiltered and it can come across really strong. And, um, and so it's really knowing when you have to, and I, I would ask you the same thing. It's knowing mm-hmm. how to approach each sibling right. and what they need at that time, not getting your opinion across. Is- and that's, that's the master of being in the middle. You, you understand that we c- cannot speak to people in the family the same way yeah Yeah. every every conversation is customized and should be because we all have reactions to approaches and we Mm -hmm. and we get good at that especially when we're talking to our parents yeah even the timing of when we talk to them are they a morning person are they a Mm -hmm. night person you know um my mom i lived with us uh, until she died Mm-hmm. And, uh, but the, the beautiful situation that we had was we, as you can see, I live in an apartment building. And so she lived in her own apartment. And so she was only four floors away. She had total independence. And every night I would go down and sit with her and watch Wheel of Fortune Mm. And dancing with the stars, Will of Fortune, and then Jeopardy right after it. Yes, (laughs) yes. But but you know what's cool about that is that's where all the convers the the deep, yes, wonderful reality conversations took place. And spending time watching TV was just an excuse to get together. Yeah, Yeah. and that's where all the magic happened. Yeah, and because she was you know, always with us. And um, I, I feel like I had the best of all worlds because Mm -hmm. I, we really, that's how we talked about some tough stuff. She would just bring it out of nowhere. And and during the commercials. (laughs) Oh, well, you you have 30 seconds to push in your complaints. (laughs) Right. Right. You know, that's interesting that you did it during commercials. <laughs> so, so she wouldn't Joy, let me talk during the other time. I respect that. So, she's solving puzzles. So Joy, <laughs> you've had, like, there's so many of us that have had, we have uh, ourselves, we have, we deal with our mom, but then I look at, and we, we told people in the beginning, you've got 10 plus people that you've mm-hmm. been caring for. So I've looked at that and it says aunts and uncles and yeah. spouses, mother-in-laws, uh, 
co- coworkers and things like that. So just kind of trail through those and how you got to all these people. Well, first of all, uh, caregivers, and maybe you're in this camp, I don't know, but you must realize that the caregiving never ends. Yeah. And we don't call it necessarily caregiving. I just call it caring. Mm. I'm not a nurse. I don't have a medical background. But as mm. long as I am caring about somebody and do, and doing things for them, I'm a caregiver. Mm. And so it, it doesn't matter the level. Now, I have a lot of relationships in my life, and therefore I care for them. And as they get older, I am well aware of what to look for. Mm-hmm. And so the, the, the co-worker thing is, is quite a story. Mm-hmm. I, I um, was working in, in the early 70s at an ad agency, J. Walter Thompson, and I got very close to two of the co-workers who are now in their 80s and 90s. And I have been in a relationship with them all this time. And sure enough, they landed on my doorstep. They call me all the time. I need this. I need that. I, I, and so here I am and they have family and I'm bringing their family in, but I'm doing uh, a lot of phone counseling and, and visiting as well. You never, ever know who's going to land on your doorstep. Um, And it it happens gradually. And as long as we have a caregiver mindset, we need to realize that, hey, this is just going to escalate and I got to be on my game. There's no way I would say, well, you know, don't you have a daughter? Don't you have this? Don't you have? No, it is. It is very, very important to understand if you're in a relationship with people and you love them, you're going to love them to death. Yeah, I I think it's a level of compassion, Joy. I mean, I hear you say that. And I I will say, you know, Emily, she has worked uh, in the field. She's worked uh, taking care of people before. I know she, somebody had called out, uh, and I give you a kudo for this, Emily, because you take care of mom as well. But somebody had called out and you had gotten the message that said, we had somebody call out to take care of someone uh, and the job that she was working and they just needed somebody. This lady had not had a bath in days. Mm -hmm. And Emily said, they just needed somebody to stop and take a bath. And she said, you know, I'm on my way to get mom. And I'm thinking, I I almost have time to stop and give this lady a bath because she's an elderly woman, the CNA or whomever called out. And you're like, if you have that compassion in your heart, you want to help anybody once you're a caregiver, because Mm -hmm. you, people just need, they just need that, that I think that makes them, I don't know that that's what changes their life. So I, I, I give you kudos because, you know, for that relationship, first of all, that you've had all that time, but you're like, I can take care of them. You know, they're, they're coworkers. So. <laughs> I mean, it, it is, it does require boundaries. We, we, yeah. we, um, but I'm a, I'm a good planner and I'm very organized. So yeah. you have to be both in order to do this and not burn out. I take really good care of myself. Right. I exercise, I eat right. Uh, I, I make sure that, like I said, I delegate, delegate, delegate. And that means that I'm always got one eye on what's going on. So, um, and people, the, the, not everybody needs a super amount of help at the same time. Right. So I, so I'm gauging that as well, but I'm there. You you did say that when you and I first talked was that, that care. So you make sure you exercise, you make sure that you eat well. And Mm -hmm. so, and and you're also, you're married as well. Is I that am. right? Yeah. I so am. I mean, you got it all. Everybody's taken care yeah. of, but it is yeah. pri- those are your priorities. Right. right? It's to take right. care of yourself. Oh yeah, yeah. And I and I take naps. <laughs> oh God, who doesn't? Well, I don't love think it. I I don't think I've had a good night's sleep since my mom moved in with us in two, 2010. Mm-hmm. So I know how to take a nap, and that's mm-hmm. also cultural. The Italian the Italians close the stores at noon they have lunch they go to bed they wake up and they go back to work and so it's like nap time is like whoa so important I love that that, that's so true I'm I'm going to say this um when I was I had the opportunity to study abroad we went to Spain 
And um, the shops closed up from two to four and they were like, it's siesta. And I'm like, heck yeah, give me a siesta. (laughs) And, you know, we talk about, we record, we try to record our podcast in the morning because you said it yourself, you know, I'm pretty much brain dead at three o'clock. I don't take meetings after three because my brain has stopped functioning. That's right. That's right. We just really have to pay attention to what we are realistically capable of. And it just floors to me that people talk about, oh, Joy, I, I never heard about your book or I never heard about being able to plan. And, all, and I was like, what rock are you living under? You, 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 can't, you can't tell me that you, you have been like turning it off for so long or just not paying attention. I, I for the past 30 years, my job has been to wake people up. This mm. is a family responsibility that is going to happen. Not, not if, but when. And, and I, I just can't stress that enough. But what to do is different for everybody. That's the other thing, is they should surround themselves with people who know this so that they can get help. And I, I don't understand, though I've, I've had plenty of experience in hearing people say Oh, I just didn't know I could have done something ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So I Emily and I, you're in the middle of it. Yeah. You're just, it's all consuming because I don't have that village. I have phone right. people that I can call, but I feel like, I do feel like sometimes I'm in a rock. I'm isolated um, mm-hmm. because it's just me and mom. Um, so it's kind of, you know, eye-opening to hear that. And I'm like, okay. And then, you're, then I think, okay, when am I going to have time to read when I'm doing, <laughs> I'm cleaning, I'm cooking, you right. know, caring for her. And so that's a new, a, a new way to look at it. Yeah. So I'm going to call Emily out. She's going to be like, JJ. So Emily, in all of your time, cause I know you say, uh, I don't have time. Have you ever heard of the tool that Joy offers her book? Like you're going to be yeah. like amazed and joy. That's the problem that that whole caregiver term, but joy has this tool and you're like, Oh, wow. Um, and Emily's like, have you, have you like had time to research and say, I have found this awesome tool. No, no. no. I'm like, please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> tell me the secrets. And because how long has it been out joy? Your first, your first. Book. Oh, the first edition came out in 1985. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I know. So, so I, I woke up one day and, and I knew that family members weren't talking to each other. So I wrote the complete elder care planner just to get people to talk. And you know, the first group of people who wanted help with that were the employers Mm. in 1985, childcare was the big thing. Yeah. But then I woke them up and said, hey, wait a minute, your, co- your workers and your employees and you in management are going to be facing elder care. And they yeah. didn't even know what I was talking about. No. So what happened was, is they put me on the road right away and I gave, and I still do, I, I give employee workshops all over. Uh, just yesterday, I was talking to uh, an employer a pro, like a service provider in, in uh, London. Mm. So the big deal is elder care in the workplace. So Emily, do you have a full-time job? Oh, absolutely not. Mm-mm. Okay. So you have, <laughs> no, so, you, so outside of elder care, you got zip, right? You got zip. Yeah. But she, okay. And she has tried, she has tried. That's the problem. She has pulled back from it because uh, that's the problem is that there, I don't think you, there's, I don't think that we've ha- found an employer that can work with her joy. I think that's the problem, Em. Yeah, You're absolutely, absolutely right. It, we, yeah. we have done our darnest to get employers to offer realistic elder care benefits. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them do, but more don't. Right. Because they don't see the, the struggle of, yeah of employees. Well, first of all, employees don't come forward. They yeah. don't say I have the problem and I don't blame them because yeah. they're going to get pegged as not being available. Yeah. So and that I think a lot of our sense. listeners are like that. They're kind of yeah. like, because I think so many people do work and they just, they don't know what to say, Joy. You're so exactly here's, right. 
So for those people, they need to go outside of the work. Where When I do a lot of work with the senior housing communities, and what they can do is they can find resources in their neighborhood, and they have to do it on their own. But the first people I would go to if I were employed and I didn't know what the heck was going on and I needed resources, mm -hmm. I would go to the local life plan community. I would go to the local assisted living community. These people have resources for dementia care and and dentists for, for older adults and every kind of financial planning for caregiving. These are the people that I would go to if I was employed or even not employed. Emily, they're available to you as well. So you, you go and say, hey, I'm on my own here. I'm not employed or I, I don't have any support. I need some help. And go sit down and talk to those people who are the most incredible experts in the world. So life plan communities and assisted living right in your neighborhood. There's millions of them, right? In the, well, in, you know, I'll say this, Joy, too, because we don't, I'm not familiar with life plans or the, the those pieces of it. Like, so I'm in Virginia, but what I do know, there is, um, like, we have the area uh, uh, agency on aging. And so that's a, another, depending on which state you're in, they come in all different names. But I, I guarantee you there is, um, and this is for everybody. So this is, jot this down, and this is easy to remember. Mm -hmm. There's 211. 211 is the federal number for the non emergency. Uh, uh, number for services and it's normally health and human services. And so if you can't find some of these resources that Joy's referencing, if you were to call 211, which is a free number, toll free number, there are individuals who answer the phone 24 seven and can help you get connected to the agency in your state for aging population, yeah. as well as others. Hey, Emily, I have a question for you. If you had to say what your number one need is right now, what would it be? Oh, absolutely. Um, assistance. I need other caregivers to, so I can get away. So I could go work, you right. know, because I'm working usually the seven, seven days a week, 24 hour shifts, unless we use respite care, which thank God JJ and Nellie came in and gave me like five days. I mean, that was, that was massive. Um, but even if it's just for a few hours, um, it's just really hard. So, th so um, if it's only for a few hours, there are an abundance of volunteer resources. Mm -hmm. Your local senior center is filled with people who who love to volunteer. Your local mm -hmm. churches and parishes. So, even if it's a couple of hours, that will make your day. And you could even That's take true. a nap and take a bath. <laughs> which is her favorite a bath she, she had a bath this morning read a book. i but, mean but yes volunteers are everywhere local high schools have kids who have to have um i don't know they get extra credit right my advice to you right now would be find volunteers who could give you respite and many of them love wheel of fortune <laughs> See, I'm pretty protective of my wheel of fortune and Jeff. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> I think, okay. I think me and mom can be total teammates. Yeah. Right. Wait, that's her favorite Ooh. time of the day, Joy. Hold on. She doesn't want that. Okay. Well, then nap nope. time. Nap time. Nap time. Nap time. Nap time. Yeah. It doesn't so, matter. Volunteers are everywhere and and um, they're a godsend. I think it's so, maybe not feeling overwhelmed, though, because that's my mm -hmm. concern. I know... Emily, because we have a constant stream and uh, of of a text group, and we try to support each other that way. We've already been texting this morning. Like yes, it started true. early this morning about this is the kind of what's going on. It's how we try to stay connected and support one another. I think my worry, Joy, is that like right now when you're in your calm state, you're like that makes sense. Like my brain is absorbing that. I worry that for caregivers who are in the middle of it, it's like you can't see the forest for the trees. And I think trying to help those individuals to pull back to see the forest so that you can then say, oh, I've got all these, you know, it's a forest. I've got all these resources, but it's almost like overwhelming where to even start. Like you say, oh, well, you can go to schools or churches or whatever. And then you're thinking, oh my gosh, who am I going to call? And so 
I can see where that's a deterrent. It's not an excuse, but I think it's real because when you are dysregulated and you're not okay because you're just in a crisis state is what at times I think it, it's felt like. And I don't want to speak for Emily, but it sometimes feels like a crisis state. And I can't, I don't know that I can put A and B together. And so maybe if you have any advice for how do you get, how do you pull back from that to try to get out of that crisis state? And so Natalie, I the word guilt. Yeah. Oh, guilt is also oh, another really good one. Oh my god. Okay, gosh. so now we're talking, if I don't do something, I'm guilty. If I do do something, I didn't do it enough. I didn't do it well. I I suck at this. I'm I'm the worst daughter in the world. Guilt, oh guilt, guilt. Guilt <laughs> is what guilt is what keeps us pushing against our own well being. So we can't deal with any of this. He'll go make a phone call to a volunteer thing until we sit down and have a conversation with ourselves about guilt. Listen, <laughs> Natalie, it's, Joy is, JJ like is crying right now. People. Joy, that was my entire yeah. yesterday. I mean, okay. she was not in tears yesterday on the phone with me. Like yeah. it was, I was like, Jay, you're going to wreck people driving by. You look like you think they're thinking you're having a breakdown right now. <laughs> Joy, that okay. is, you're Some, on it. Sometimes the, the crying is what gets us. And then crying to someone is what stops this behavior of, um, I'll never be enough. I'll never get it right. Oh. The, the, all that stuff. My mom, I was out of town when my mom died suddenly. Do I feel guilty about her and me not being there? Not for a second. I, I know that every time I'm with someone, I can only be there for the, the second. I am enough. I'm good enough. Nothing I do will ever change that. So, so if someone can't make that phone call or just cry, cry is a great place to start. But the thing is, that, Lord help us. <laughs> that's what stops that crazy, the, the, the momentum. We got to stop the momentum of thinking we can do it all. And once we do that, Sometimes we could say, maybe th this is where delegating comes in. What I would call someone and say, can you help me? That's all I would say. I wouldn't say how I need the help because I wouldn't know how I need the help. I would just say, I need help. I freaking need help. Mm -hmm. And then somebody would say, I'm here. And then, and then it would be the biggest sigh of relief. Mm. That's I like. It's Speaking all about guilt, the guilt. And then ah, I'm going to add another G word here. <clears throat> We're also grieving at the same mm, time. I agree. So anticipatory true. grief is in the, the elephant in the room. So this is an incredible job. Caregiving is like God's work. It is. It's the best thing you'll ever do in your whole life. So we have to acknowledge we're grieving and we feel guilt all the time. Mm. I think it's all not, the time is true. All, we have to manage that. No one can manage it. The people we care about and that we, they have nothing to do with this. This is our business. And we got to manage that for our own sanity. Yeah, I, I, I would say that. Em, I feel like you were you have yeah, the, the key word sanity. Because I'm always like, okay, I have to put myself first before I can be the best person for her, the best caregiver. But sometimes it just gets all muddled. Um, I know, I know it does, Emily. It does, it does, it does, and it and it's the nature of the work. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you just just that you have sisters and other people you can cry with. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like just when you feel like that, pick up the phone and just start crying. Like this every day, Joy. <laughs> That's okay. No, no, it's okay. I do it. Yeah. Oh, are you kidding? I've been. I when I give a keynote, I start crying. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Pass out the tissue yeah. before you get up. There. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We. You know what? Crying is so good. So I love this, Joy. 
first of all, because I cry all the time. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, um, because there are so many people that we've talked to and we've been so blessed doing this because we get responses and people are just, they're exhausted, but they're also struggling. Mm -hmm. And when you say guilt, but you say grief, we're in a Mm -hmm. really difficult place right now. And I'll share this with you where mom's health has declined and we're Mm -hmm. really grieving. And I am at least struggling with the thought that eventually we will have to move mom to a skilled nursing. And so for me, there is like, there is grief already because at some point that is to me, like, there's just such grief. And I think that's there with all of us that eventually that is the place, but there's so many listeners out there that even as they take, they take this on every day. I think that was the purpose of our podcast is to say, you are enough and you're going to have, it's an internal thing, Natalie. I mean, it is with us. Natalie's like, you got to get some counseling, Jay. I told her. You got to, you got to get peace with this in yourself. And I think Emily's the same way. We're like, it's, it's, we have to get peace with it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, this whole process of caretaking, because it's hard. Um, but a lot of it, how did you reach a point? Sorry, Jay. How did you reach no, a go point? Ahead. Say, okay. Um, I, I've got to put these things in place so I don't lose myself. Like you're still a wife, you're still everything to everybody, but how did you say, okay, I must put these things in place for, you know, to protect myself from sanity. And, um, so you can be the best person you can be. It's, it's, it's so messy. Is it? <laughs> And one day I'm okay, one minute I'm okay, and the next minute I'm not. Mm, and I and that. and once I once once I start going into my messy part, I cry and then I laugh. <laughs> so Girl, you are a sister. Laugh, She's, a sister. Um, She's a sister. She's a sister because that that's like cry laugh, cry laugh, that, cry laugh, that cry laugh. A... Okay, there you go. That's your mantra: cry laugh, cry laugh. There is no, this is, this is, this is the most love you're going to feel in your whole life. This is the most, most emotion you're going to feel in your whole life. You're going to ride this roller coaster and you're going to ride it fast and you're going to ride it slow and you're going to feel feelings you don't even know you got. And it is so, this is living. This is what living looks like. (laughs) So sometimes, so I heard a saying and it's so true. It says, sometimes life is even um, more Italian than Italians. <laughs> I like that. You know who that. we are. We are so out there. We are so abastanza. Everything we do is out there, and we we wear everything on our sleeves. This is what living is like. And if you lived in a culture, if you lived in Italy, you would see you see people on the street. What are you doing? Oh, you know, and they're just all over the place. This, we're just not used to this in the American culture. You're right. And we, it's okay. It's safe. You're safe. Everything is fine. Because when you feel these feelings, you are living, you are loving, mm-hmm. you are laughing, you are crying. These people, you will have the most incredible memories. Yeah. You, you can't believe how our, our loved ones live with us after they're gone. And you will laugh your head off. And later, you'll see photographs. You'll go, oh, my God. <laughs> when I watch Wheel of Fortune now, I crack up. I'm even, I talk to myself. I go, oh, mom would love this. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is a great solution. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so but- Emily... It's messy all the time. Okay. And and just love, just just you will just live it out. Live live through this. I you know what? Here's what I want to say. Our parents are not a problem to solve. We got problems to solve. Elder care, caregiving, nursing home, dementia. We got it, we we gotta solve problems. But that's not where I come from. I come from the relationship first. Mm-hmm. That's all, and then and then I think, oh, I'm smart enough. I could I could figure out this problem. But that's not where I am when I'm with my mom or dad or anybody. I'm with them. The relationship comes first. The problems will get solved, and people turn they 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 go the opposite. My mother is a problem to solve. No, she's not. She's your mother. 
start there. Be with her there. Then if something's up, you go, okay, I'll figure it out. The relationship is all I care about. People tell me they can't get their parents to do stuff. It's because the trust isn't there. They don't, they haven't established a trusting relationship because well, they're so busy solving problems. Hey ladies, I need to interrupt for just a second to share about the sisterhood membership. It's basically a sale every day. And the best part, it's free. Here's the details. We're partnering with our friends at Benefit Hub and other care partners to save you money. With over 200,000 participating companies across the U.S. and abroad, you'll find discounts at your favorite local stores, huge savings on vacations, amazing deals on home, auto, and supplemental insurances, and everything in between. Go to confessionsofareluctantcaregiver.com to sign up and then definitely tell your friends about it. They can join too. Trust me, there's a discount for everyone. And don't forget, it's free. Okay, back to confessing. Do you have any suggestions when uh, the relationship is a bit tense right now because yeah. there's a bit back and forth? Um, and of course, I want to meet her where her need is, where she's at currently. But there's times where I'm like, I don't even like her. I'm going to be honest. Oh. Oh, she, yeah. she doesn't like me. She'll be very verbal about it. So oh. like, how do you overcome that side of it when I have to step back and sometimes be like, okay, I can't be the daughter right now. I'm the caretaker. Mm-hmm. And she still looks at me as the daughter, but still it's the lines are very blurred at this point. Okay. She's mad at her. She's mad at being old. She's mad at being sick. Mm-hmm. She's mad at the situation. She's mad at reality has nothing to do with you. And the only person she has to, to, to blast out at is you. That's right. Yeah. And so and- when I'm with, and, and trust me, every day with all these people I'm caring for, mm-hmm. every single day I wake up and I say, okay, who's going to be mad at me today? <laughs> <laughs> I think though like that, that you've got to, you can say I've got to be, somebody's going to be mad at me. And you're right. Because our mom is, our mom is pissed. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm just going to be really frank summary. about it. And yeah. that is, yeah. and, and it can be very, the words that come out, the, mm-hmm. the, the words that come out can be very hurtful. Yeah. And so it is natural for us to want to protect ourselves and want to push away as opposed to lean in. And I sure. think that is, that is the hardest thing that we as humans, because we're built for relationship. But we're not built for abuse. And okay, so abuse is different. You can say, I don't deserve what you just said. Right. Okay, okay we know this. But I don't, you, I don't lean in when people are on a rant. Yeah. What I do is I validate. I'm, I'm not leaning in. I'm standing straight up. And I'm letting them go. Sometimes when we try to interrupt their their thought process, mm-hmm. it it stops them from being able to, I call it call, talking a blue streak. Let them talk. You, it has nothing to do with you. You hear I sit there and say, This is not this is not about me. It's not about me. I'm talking in my head. They're talking, they're saying what they're saying. They know darn well that they're just angry about the situation. Mm -hmm. And I validate when they're done talking and they will, it won't sound feel like it, but eventually they'll stop talking about how angry they are and you and all the bad things you're doing and you do this and that. After a while, they'll stop talking and I'll say, mom, I heard you. This is really hard, isn't it? And then the problem with caregivers is they talk too much. Mm. They need, our parents, our elders need to be validated. That's pretty much it. Put yourself in their shoes. They're so mad. This is not the way it's supposed to be. You know, Joy, I would say, and for our listeners who are not uh, with, um, dealing with somebody with their parent or an individual aging that that translates across whether your loved one is dealing with a chronic illness i remember 
Jason, there were just times he was mad yeah. and he's so mad and I so get it. And I can tell you, it's so in our human nature to want to internalize that and absorb that. And you have to be careful. And so it's finding the balance. And you're right about saying in your head, this is not about me. This is not about me. I'm choosing. I'm choosing. I'm taking the control back. I'm not going to let this affect my self-worth and my right. value. And I think that's so important for people to hear, whether you're dealing with a child, a spouse of whatever, it doesn't matter who you're caring for, because at some point when you have something like this happen, that person's going to be pissed mm -hmm. and they're going to want to verbalize it. And, and we all deep down simply want validation. Yeah. yeah. So man, Joy, you're like a, like a therapist, a <laughs> yeah. uh, sister. She uh, is. Uh, I mean, we, she's got, you can be yeah, a parent if you'd like to. Okay, yeah, we're gonna we're we're gonna, take you. I mean, <laughs> she's got. Sister. I mean, I want her to come back because yeah. I know. I mean, she's got. She's got even more stuff about who yeah. will take care of you when you're old. Oh my gosh! Like, yeah, we got to hear more about that too. I, yeah, I know, I'm solo like, aging. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, girl, like, I want to come back and you talk oh. about solo aging because I'm screwed at this moment. <laughs> so, okay, you got it. I, 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 no, no, we're all screwed. We're all eventual solo agers. I That's mean, true. Natalie, yes. Natalie's husband, and we'll, we'll just give a preemptive to that because Joy, I definitely want you to come back to talk about that yeah. because Natalie, what does Jason say? Cause Natalie and Jason, of course, have the dogs you can see in the background, but what does Jason say about, uh, about you guys and your aging? Oh, uh, our aging plan is to, uh, which bridge is the newest for us to live on. <laughs> And so Jay, I'm like, and, and so I said, well, we're, I told him this morning with uh, JJ's here at my house and she's, he said, I said, oh, I said, we got to talk to Joy. Cause I found Joy uh, on our solo aging article, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I said, and he goes, oh, well, we'll just be solo aging with all the other people under the bridge. And I'm like, damn it, Jason, no, that is not the plan. And he's like, it's so funny. I have a chapter in the Who Will Take Care of Me when I'm old book. It's called Just Shoot Me is Not a Plan. <laughs> How many times have you said, just shoot me? Just shoot yeah. me. Just yeah, shoot me. That's, that's because it. people are fearful. You know what? I think oh, yeah. people are so fearful of what's going to happen because we don't know. But the yeah. best part is, is we can. We can okay. control certain things. So I definitely want to make sure Joy comes back. I do Absolutely. want to do our sister questions really quick. Um, and so uh, I think, M, do you have a sister question that you would like to ask? Of course. I, you know, <laughs> I feel like we switch them up. It's not standard, Joy. No. Um, Joy, how do you keep your relationship with your spouse mm. still, you know, mm. how do you, how do you work that into taking care of potentially not other people. Um, how does that work for you? How do you, how do you balance that? Um, first of all, it all comes down to communicating. And when I first got married, I had to be very clear about the, the ability to communicate. So if I said something to my husband and he ignored me, I would say, look over here. I'm going to say it again. I, instead of saying, did you hear me? I would try to get his focus and then I would do this again. And then we would talk and I would say, now, what do you think about what I just said? There was a lot of, I, I don't want to say I trained my husband because he's a good communicator anyway, yeah. but I do want to say that it was my job to, to teach him what I needed in order to, to get my needs across. So if I said, I'm going to be with my my uh, mom for the weekend. Uh, do you do you let's talk about it? Mm -hmm. yeah. He would be paying attention. So so and then we would have to negotiate that time. There's a negotiating and communicating is my answer, Emily. Yeah. I hope that's okay. I hope that's helpful. Communicating comes first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't wait to read your book, Joey. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, we got two of them. You get you got that complete elder care yep. plan. Oh, yeah, yeah. You so got so many get, resources. So many, oh, and I there's a that. bunch of stuff in there about uh, communicating with siblings. 
Uh, oh, oh lady yeah. siblings there yeah. you are you got oh, you guys you, are okay <laughs> joy if you're adding to that you need to put text stream from the Elliot yeah. sisters text. <laughs> yeah we're big believers in text and memes and images i love that images really yeah. help um, a lot of times so, i go you, like this yes <laughs> so yes. joy my question is really simple you we talk about naps uh how long is your nap oh good one i don't set a, a timer my my body knows it could be 20 minutes to two hours okay Ooh. it doesn't matter so i got it this little chunk of time and and if i if i just even lay down and sometimes i can't sleep at least i've stopped all this craziness for 20 minutes okay. well and and that is absolutely therapeutic it's really the breathing and stuff that helps even if you just shut your eyes exactly. and you take a micro nap the mm -hmm. micro naps, even at your chair, when you need to sit back and just close your eyes, lean your head back for five minutes, that is actually very regulating. And another trick that I have is, let's say I'm out of town, which is 99% of my life because I travel a lot for, for um, work or whatever. I'll go to the car. Mm, I love the car. I'm in the it's car. Warm. You bet. I'll go, I'll go sit back in my car and just say, oh. Oh, that's so, so true. Don't remember Emily, you, you can hide in your car. Emily, you can hide. It is I a mean, I've been using that for decades. <laughs> <laughs> that is the facts. We have been using the car for a we long time. We know that. When I, when I lunch yeah. my kid in work, I would go sit in my car at least for 15 that's right. minutes to kind of that's right. center and lose that. Oh, I could sick. I could sleep on airplanes. I could sleep in the middle of a park with kids running around. Oh. I'm a good napper. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so here's the final question. Um, what is your favorite guilty pleasure? What is your favorite guilty pleasure? Vanilla ice cream. Oh, that, oh that's oh. good. Uh, I can't get enough of it. When when I was taking care of my dad, he was another story. He was uh, whatever, and um, friends would say to me because they could see I was I was a mess. And they'd say, can I help you? I go, yeah, um, come over and bring me a gallon of vanilla ice cream. <laughs> not a pint, not a no, 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 we're not playing a gallon, a gallon of vanilla ice cream. Is there any particular brand that you really yeah. like? Cause I know we oh, just, I don't buy the cheap stuff. So whatever, okay. I mean, yeah. just really has to be good. Yeah. Uh, my you know, second that's... favorite is pistachio but i love oh, vanilla, vanilla. That's good. That's good mm. so she's an yeah. ice cream she's an ice cream girl. I I love it. Oh, yeah. ice cream oh yeah ice cream's a happy food and that's another thing like when when i'm with people who are like not doing too well like emily i would come over and i would bring you ice cream and you and i and an ice cream cone isn't it like instant happiness <laughs> it takes me back to childhood and good times like, Ice cream is a happy food. And, and when you go visit people, bring ice cream. They'll love you forever. Um, <laughs> I like also bring ice cream. It's ice cream, oh, people. And that is true. Jay. Oh, Joy, I... First of all, that's the perfect name because you have brought me joy. <laughs> you have brought me so much joy this morning and mm. I cannot thank you enough for coming, but you're coming back. So it doesn't matter. Yay. Um, we're going to yeah. talk about the uh, other book that's going to help me and Natalie, which is solo aging. Cause Emily has uh -oh. kids. Uh, we're hoping they're going to take care of her. So. Yeah. <laughs> Don't uh, ever count uh, anybody else. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're, yeah, that's true. But I cannot thank you enough. Uh, and thank our listeners for listening. They're going to get a true blessing out of this because oh, I totally you agree. are fantastic. Yeah. You are fantastic. So thank you. Thank you for blessing us thank today, you, Joy. Yep, yep. Thank you for blessing me. I will be thinking <laughs> about all three of you for a long time and especially today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening in and we appreciate you and we will see you next time. Well, friends, that's a wrap on this week's confession. Again, thank you so much for listening. But before you go, please take a moment to leave us a review and tell your friends about the Confessions podcast. Don't forget to visit our website to sign up for our newsletter. You'll also find the video recording of all of our episodes on the Confessions website and our YouTube channel. Don't worry, all the details are included in the show notes below. We'll see you next Tuesday when we come together to confess again. Till then, take care of you.
Okay, let's talk disclaimers. You may be surprised to find out, but we are not medical professionals and are not providing any medical advice. If you have any medical questions, we recommend that you talk with a medical professional of your choice. As always, my sisters and I at Confessions of a Reluctant Caregiver have taken care in selecting the speakers, but the opinions of our speakers are theirs alone. The views and opinions stated in this podcast are solely those of the contributors and not necessarily those of our distributors or hosting company. This podcast is copyrighted and no part can be reproduced without the express written consent of the Sisterhood of Care LLC.